the Honorable Minister of Information for the opening remarks. But distinguished guests, quickly, uh, I wish to recognize the presence of the Controller General of Prison Service, Mr. Zedo Ibrahim, also David S. Paradan, Controller General of Immigration Service, Ade Abolorin, Con Commandant General Nigerian Security and Civil Defense, uh, Engineer James Olusegun Kibiron, Controller General Federal Fire Service. Uh, also, we want to welcome our dear brother, Mr. Lodam Ndam, who is overseeing the Federal Ministry of Information in the place of the Permanent Secretary who just retired yesterday. Mr. Ndam, you're welcome. So, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we would go straight to the presentations and I would want to invite the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs in the person of retired Navy Captain Caleb Olubolade to please come forward and tell Nigerians what he is doing in that sector so that Nigerians will appreciate their efforts. Honorable Minister of Police Affairs. For me to read out the Ministry of Police Affairs transformation in the federal government's transformation agenda. I will start by saying to fight crimes, criminality, and terrorism professionally, the Ministry of Police Affairs works with the police management team and the Police Service Commission to transform the Nigerian police to a professional force. I would like you to take a look at the slide on how this is being achieved. If you take a look at this slide, you will see a police vehicle there. From my knowledge of physics, that, will, that vehicle will not move because it has some inertia. There are impediments that have to be overcome even when pushed from the rear before it can overcome. Those impediments that are listed there range from Funding challenges, inadequate training, indiscipline, corrupt practices, crimes, and terrorism. We will have to overcome that. We have some transformation agents. The federal government itself has a role to play. The ministry, the police management team, and the police service commission, and in fact the public, have to be vigilant and report unforeseen circumstances to the security agencies so that they can address the insecurity promptly. By the grace of God, the police is making progress and Nigerians will see the effort of the police as time progresses. What are the crimes in our society today? ranging from kidnapping and climbing to terrorism. The Ministry of Police Affairs formulates policies, programs, and concrete projects aimed at improving professionalism, training, and welfare of the police force for greater performance. The police force is committed to training and retraining and the welfare of its staff, including rewarding hard work and discipline of personnel to be able to deliver the service of protecting lives and properties and enforce the law. This administration inherited a police force that lacked adequate training, logistics, and capacity to confront the rising crimes and terrorism. Accordingly, 
Mr. President has taken pragmatic steps to transform the Nigerian police and address insecurity through the following. Provision of logistics, promoting better cooperation and intelligence exchanges with international multilateral and security institutions, setting up for presidential community to reorganize the entire police, presidential committee on dialogue and peaceful resolution of security challenges, another committee to investigate the proliferation of small arms and light weapons. Finally, declaring a state of emergency in three northern states, namely Yobe, Rono, and Adamawa. And it's also providing material reliefs to displaced and affected persons in the emergency declared states to cushion the effects of hardship brought about by insurgents and terrorists. This presentation will cover the following. Achievements of the ministry. And then I will talk of the challenges facing the ministry. I will conclude. The policy trust of the ministry is to build a modern, well-equipped, well-motivated force that will be capable of protecting lives and properties of our fellow citizens and impartially enforce the law, fight crime both by preventing it and aggressively pursuing violators of the law. The Ministry of Police Affairs in those two years of 2011 and 2012 initiated four policies that will address funding, training, prevent the misuse of explosives. And in this respect, the first one is the Nigerian Police Force Reform Trust Fund Establishment Bill. This bill seeks to establish the Police Force Reform Trust and it, it is introduced to the seventh legislative session for consideration and passing into law. Another one is the one of the Nigerian Police Academy Establishment Bill to establish the Police Academy to a degree awarding institution. Then we have the policy on explosives following the presidential directive to register all companies handling explosives in the country to safeguard the legal use. We are able to have a database of companies involved in these activities of explosives seismic, radioactive, biological, and chemical materials in the country. And then the establishment of 10 new explosives ordnance department subunits. This is as a follow-up of the policy on explosives so that these subunits were established in Bauchi, Brinikebi, Duse, Gombe, Gusau, Jalingo, Lafia, Lagos, Mina, and Umahia to address the nagging crime of terrorism. Let me go on to the programs and activities of the ministry. In the past two years, the ministry has organized and participated in quite a number of programs and activities. These programs and activities were geared towards improving professionalism in the police force and ultimately guarantee the safety of lives and property of our citizens. A few of these activities are listed on these slides. You can see several workshops on community policing, intelligence gathering, effective budgeting and revenue generation for the police, interagency security meetings, monitoring and supervisory programs were also conducted. We attended some conferences and security meetings with the Interpol in Italy and then international exhibition and expositions in Israel. Some of the pictures at those events can be seen on the slides. In order to be able to support the police in the area of training, in the area of institution, certain projects were executed. In the last two years, the Ministry of Police Affairs and the police force have completed quite a number of projects, and a few are still ongoing. We'll take a look at some of the completed projects. There is the upgrade of the Police Academy to a degree awarding institution. It's a major project of the ministry. 
the modernization of the Nigerian Police Staff College in Jos, and the National Public Security Communication System. That is the ZTE project being uh, executed. And then we supported the police by the pro through the provision of a lot of logistic support. And then we supported them in training. As far as the police pro the projects in the academy is concerned, we, we made all these provisions such that the college can take off like the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna. Their officers are trained to be professional, to be able to supervise and take charge of the rank and file that works under them. I strongly believe that if this institution is well built to a modern standard and the requisite training is given to the officers, they will be able to lead the men that will truly police Nigeria and we give it all that we have to ensure that that is happening. And the steps we have taken so far in this respect is that approval was sought and obtained from the National Universities Commission recognizing the Police Academy as a degree awarding institution on 3rd of April 2012. The picture, the picture will speak for itself. We have also undertaken the selection process of all the cadets that will commence training in September this year. You can see some of the pictures with the National Universities Commission uh, on the screen. And besides that, a lot of construction projects are being undertaken. I will just give you a summary of those projects. There is the construction of the Senate building is completed, construction of two in number faculty buildings, a lecture theater, and seven in number hostel blocks have all been completed. We have also constructed the three in number transit suits and the rehabilitation of existing structures in the police academy. Some pictures of this can be seen on the slide. There's the Senate building there. Next one is the hostel accommodation, hostel block for students, for officer students. The transit suits are also shown. There's also cadet mess that has been rehabilitated in the academy. Incidentally, we have some ongoing projects at the Academy in Kano. Pictures of some of those ongoing projects, which are also nearing completion now, can be seen in the photograph. I'm sure you can see the ID standing by me there, policing me as we inspect the projects. <laughs> Faculty buildings, at the staff, senior staff quarters are ready. The staff quarters, the police staff college in Jos. That one is a major project of the ministry as well. The staff college was established in 1976 as an education center to provide specialized and advanced training, including staff duties for officers and men of the rank of assistant superintendent of police to deputy commissioner of police. But with the growth in manpower of the Nigerian police force, the manpower of the police can consume both the military and all other security agencies. So you can see that the police force is, a, is quite a large force. We've had to go into modernizing the institution and providing more facilities. And a few projects that are undertaken there can be seen on the slide. There is a construction of four in number junior officers hosted block. Each of them can accommodate 60 officers. There is construction of a new auditorium, water supply and reticulation at police staff college at police staff quarters, as well as construction of four in number senior officers hosted blocks. These are the projects that are ongoing at the police staff college in Jos. 
few pictures of those jobs that have been completed, especially the rehabilitation, is, can be seen on the slide. As the Central and Planning Training Unit, and um, the commandants, the lecture theater, the commandants' uh, residence, hostel blocks, hostel block, and the commandants' residence can be seen, and also the rehabilitated staff quarters can be seen. From these few photographs, you will agree with me that the staff college has been given a facelift. I want to say also that even the ongoing projects that we call the ongoing have reached advanced stages of completion and it would be nice to show you some of those pictures. You can now see uh, some of those pictures, they have reached advanced stage of completion. In fact, the, 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 the work has gone beyond what you are seeing on the screen and we have quite a number of those type of buildings there. I want to believe that at the end of completing this project, they will look close to what happens in the military staff college in Kaduna. The National Public Security Communication Systems Project is another ICT project of the Ministry. And the trust of the project is to enable the police to have the opportunity of using modern technology in fighting crime. The project has gone to a very appreciable stage of completion. In fact, as of uh, last month, we have completed the project and we are looking forward to Mr. President commissioning it very shortly. The project is comprised of five main components. The global trunking architecture, the e-policing subsystem, video conferencing, coalition emergency response, and video sub surveillance subsystem, which has 2,000 CCTV cameras, which are, to be, which are installed in Abuja and Lagos, and those installations have been completed and the system is working. We are looking forward to extending the same to other states of the Federation so that we will have a national coverage. It would be nice to take a look at some of the pictures of this project right from inception till date. It is being done, being carried out by the ZTE of China and the Lagos State Command switch centers are shown. The one in Abuja too is the one shown on the screen. We have the main switch center showing 90 meters high tower with microwave antenna. We also have surveillance cameras monitor at the first headquarters, Abuja main switch center, the Lagos switch room, as well as the other installations in Abuja here. We have test run this project and we have utilized it to talk to our police commands and it is functional. The Nigerian police force also implemented a lot of projects in their own sector there. The, some of the completed projects that the police undertook are listed in the slide. A lot of rehabilitation work, construction of divisional police headquarters in Noweri. Police stations nationwide necessitated the sporadic attack. The attack on stations, have, we have to revisit that, so the police is rebuilding most of those barracks that were destroyed. And then the mounted troop personnel barrack offices and uh, renovation of area command in Zaria, Kaduna, and Kafanchan. The projects undertaken by the police are too numerous to be read out, and, uh, but they can be seen and they are available. Uh, we'll post them for those who want to have a look. But majorly, 
in order for the Nigerian police force to operate effectively, they must be provided with logistics and equipment so that they can do their work better. It costs a lot of money and uh, the reform program provides the ministry the opportunity to support the police in this respect. The police undertakes a lot of logistic provision for themselves, but the ministry has the duty to utilize the reform program to support them. And in this respect, the reform programs of 2011 and 2012, uh, we undertook the listed uh, projects and supplies. 1,500 patrol vans, the air wing section of the police is now fully functional and effective. We have 13 helicopters there and one Cessna aircraft. We also have strategic intelligence tracking system and we have supplied the police with armor patrol vans, body protection bulletproof vests, various arms and ammunition, anti-riot gears, personnel carriers, uniforms and accoutrement. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, only very recently Mr. President commissioned some logistics equipment for the police. You can see Mr. President inspecting some of the newly acquired intelligence equipment at the 2013 Police Week uh, at Eagle Square. Uh, th that picture will be shown on the slide. Uh, we also have some other projects. Those are the helicopters that were commissioned. Uh, we, have BM, we have personal carriers, we have BMW vehicles, um, patrol vehicles, to mention a few, and that's the Cessna aircraft you are seeing. Uh, what is key to the police is effective training. Training in the police is very important. There is a physical training. There is tactical training. There is training of officers and men. Officers to be able to manage the men. Training has no end for the police. And it has to be a continuous one. So the Ministry of Police Affairs complements the police force through the reform program also to give additional training for the officers, including rank and file. And a list of such trainings undertaken so far can be seen on the slide. The one you saw is the Minister of Communication, it's not part of it. <laughs> 529 officers and men trained to become explosive ordnance department technicians and also 30 female officers, because we are also gender sensitive. The IG will confirm that. Uh, 30 female officers of the Nigerian Police Force were trained in peacekeeping operations in Ghana. Uh, 92 officers are men trained in counterterrorism. We Our training goes across because there's, uh, there's, there's, there's cross-cutting uh, affairs in the sense that we can train to take advantage of what benefits they have in their own in the foreign land to be able to complement and see that our officers are up to date. So a lot of training has taken place and the list is on the, on the V4 is there. Some of the pictures taken during training can be seen at various points, uh, just a few to show that these trainings were undertaken. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the absence of a functional forensic DNA facility in Nigeria has affected policing negatively. And so in this respect, the forensic aspect is now going to be vigorously pursued in the year 2013 to be able to meet such challenges. Only recently, Mr. President constituted a committee to explore the establishment of forensic DNA laboratory in Nigeria 
I chair that committee and a lot of inputs have been given by the police and other stakeholders and at the end of this Saturday we will have a good forensic facility that will become an advantage to the criminal justice system when fully implemented. Nigeria Police has gotten involved over the years. A total of 649 personnel, which is made up of 535 men and 115 women, are deployed as individual police officers, IPOs, in various peacekeeping operations. I want to state that some of the Nigerian police officers and men who have had the opportunity to serve in peacekeeping operations abroad have won medals for meritorious service which have done Nigeria proud. Some pictures of such outings by the police are shown in the slide. One aspect that I cannot fail to mention is the interagency cooperation. More emphasis is being placed on interagency cooperation amongst the security agencies as a result of increase in crime, criminality, and terrorism. The Nigerian Police Force shares intelligence with other security agencies and partakes in joint operations with them. Even the emergency, the states that have been declared a uh, state of emergency in recent times. As the police, as the military, the task force operates, the police is also playing its own role and they are complementing the effort of the task force very greatly. Community policing is another aspect. It is the general consensus that um, community, communities have important roles to play in anti-crime and anti-corruption efforts against an enemy as large as organized crime. Public support is vitally important and community involvement when implemented properly can have far-reaching long-term impact more than traditional attempts to control crime. So the Nigerian police and the police, the police, the ministry and the police management team engage the public through workshops, meetings and interactions to sensitize the public and strengthen community involvement so that we can have effective, intelligence-led policing. I want to briefly mention the challenges that the ministry and the police is facing. Towards the attainment of the above modest achievements that I have briefly run down within the time limit, the ministry had to contend with some challenges and constraints in the past two years. Federal government's reform program, which was put in place since year 2010, had funding challenges which emanated as a result of the non-passage of the Reform Trust Fund Bill. If that bill has been passed by now, the police will have been richer and they will have been able to accomplish more goals. But effort is being made by the Ministry to work with the Senate and House Committee on Police Affairs to accelerate the passage of that bill. In conclusion, in the last two years, priority was given to training and capacity building of the officers and men of the police. While the Ministry of Police Affairs is implementing the upgrade of the police academy, we deal in Kano to a degree award institution, modernizing the police staff college, which is the highest institution of the police. Police Staff College in Jos, which was established to provide specialized and advanced training to officers of the rank and ASP to DSP, to DCP. The National Public Security Communication System has been vigorously implemented, ready for commissioning by Mr. President. I want to state and put on record that the Inspector General of Police and the Police Management Team have been embark embarking on pump rigorous training in intelligence, in operational and counter-terrorism. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I must confess that this administration 
has supported the Nigeria police within its limited resources. The police is now showing greater commitment and discipline to fight crime by being proactive and alert to their duties. The ministry, in addition to supporting the police in training, logistics, and equipment provisions, will now focus more on forensic capabilities in the year 2013. May I appeal to the public to be vigilant at all times and keep the police and other security agencies informed of unusual occurrences in the society. With the support this administration is giving to the police and with what they are still yet they are yet to do and the vigilance of the public, the Nigerian police will protect lives and properties and enforce the law. I want to thank you all for your right attention. God bless. The minister was just on time. Can we once more put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for his...